Welcome lovers to another episode of Oh So Smitten, the wedding podcast. If you're in your bride era, then this podcast needs to be your new obsession. Today's guest was formerly the life of the party. Now peer pressure is the party, always delivering an experience you won't forget. Pia Pressure is a DJ with humble beginnings as she began DJing on the Gold Coast in Burley shortly after purchasing her first decks. Pia embraced her love of music and performance and soon enough that iconic pink wig began making a regular appearance. Today we chatted all about the importance of having a professional DJ at your wedding, how it can elevate your evening as they do so much more than press play to a track and why DJ Pia is a non-negotiable that you need at your wedding reception. Before we get into today's episode, I just want to remind you of a sweet little discount that the whole bride have shared with the smitten listeners. If you're after a confetti moment as you walk back down the aisle, then you definitely need to order the iconic confetti from the whole bride. It's biodegradable and also comes in a range of colors to suit any theme. Use the code SMITTEN in capitals to receive 15% off site wide. I mean, we all love a discount, right? But let's get into today's episode. Welcome, Pia. Thank you so much for chatting with me today. To say I'm a little obsessed with you is an understatement as you are such a vibe. I had to share with all of those who are about to say I do because in my eyes, you're a non-negotiable for a memorable night. So let's just start at the beginning. How did your love for music and DJing begin? Oh, wow. Well, I've loved music forever, really. But my love for DJing kind of started, I went to Saget Festival in Budapest in 2017. And I saw the Chainsmokers and I loved that song Closer and I knew that they released pop music but I thought that DJs didn't do that. I thought it was two separate things and a pop artist and a DJ seeing that and as well as them DJing and like mixing some Kanye and whatnot and everyone was just going wild. I was like, wait, what? That's a thing that people can do? Like play songs that people know as well as songs that they've released? Because I'm looking to release some of my own music soon as well. Incredible. So exciting. Yeah. And so that's how it all began. And you just kind of had those thoughts of like, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to give it a go. Yeah, it just kind of opened my eyes to what the music world could be, I guess. Because that was the first time I've ever seen a DJ play songs that they've released that are kind of pop and also mix in mainstream songs. I guess like I'd only ever seen like Avicii and whatnot and they've got like their house. I I don't know how to explain it, but it wasn't all. There was a lot of sing-along songs in their mix. And I was like, wait a second. I could do that too. So I was like, I'm going to become a DJ. And COVID hit. It was just something that had always been playing on my mind. And I'd go out dancing and be like, I just want to sing along to these songs. That's why I play a lot of sing-alongs because they're the songs that I want to hear as well. So I bought decks and taught myself. And thankfully, I was working in the bar scene at the time in hospitality in Burley. And I had gigs within a week or two of buying decks. I had to learn. I've been learning on the job, I guess. But that was at the end of 2020. Yeah, and I guess that's the best way to do it is just to kind of like learn as you go and understand the audience, know what they want. Because I think the people that you attract, you attract for a reason. Obviously, before we got on the call today, I just said to you that I lost so much time (laughs) watching like all your videos because I was like so much (laughs) fun. Yeah, that's it. I just want to create a fun vibe somewhere where I would want to be and somewhere where everyone wants to stay and keep dancing and keep having a good time. So I'm constantly... Constantly like reading the crowd, like, why isn't that person dancing? Like, why isn't that person dancing? What's going to make them dance? What's going to make them sing along? And I'm sure that's just like such a good feeling is like when you finally, you're pinpointing that person on the dance floor and then they finally get up on the dance floor for you because you've played something and you're like, got them. <laughs> that's my goal. That's it. And I'm just like, yes, yes, finally. I like keep switching genres or something and I'll just like, come on, what is it? What's going to make them? <laughs> We are here to talk about all things DJs and particularly wedding, but let's just go through what it is that you also do in your day-to-day life. You're not just a DJ, you do so many other things. So tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, I do lots of other things. I'm a primary school teacher, I'm an actor, and I'm a university tutor. All very different, I guess, hats that I wear. I do primary school teaching, I just do relief at the moment. So like a substitute supply where you just walk in for the day, but I haven't done 
a lot of that lately. Well, I'm also a teacher myself, so what? I totally understand. Yeah, so really? fun. I'm not, yeah, not currently doing it at the moment. Um, I'm just doing all things celebrant. But when I saw that you were a teacher, I was like, oh my God, so fun. Like how good would that be like for the kids? I'm sure they're probably like, play as a song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, they don't know that I wear the wig. They know that I DJ, but they don't know peer pressure. It's something I like keeping separate because then I can wear little outfits. And I want to set a good example, obviously, for the younger generation. And I, I never wear anything too provocative, but it's just I would never shop to class wearing this. <laughs> I would never shop to a school. Well, I guess that's like the perfect thing is because your wig is almost like your alter ego. Like it's someone yeah. who you can kind of step into and be like a completely different person if you want to be. Because I was looking at your teaching Instagram page, bless, because I was like, oh, that is so fun. But I was like, oh my God, you look like a completely different person. Yeah, well, because I wear the glasses as well. I normally wear glasses or contacts. Yeah, I don't ever wear glasses as peer pressure. Yeah, I keep them quite separate. It's fun to do that as well because I'm an actor. I love playing characters and I guess these are different sides of myself, but they kind of do cross over because in the classroom, you're entertaining an audience of students, obviously teaching them. You have to keep them all engaged and keep them entertained. Otherwise you lose them. And it's the same up on stage in front of a crowd got to keep them entertained, got to keep them engaged because people are like, wow, that's so different. They're such different fields, but I don't know. At the end of the day, I'm performing regardless. Yes, exactly. They're much of a muchness. And I think, as you say, they do intertwine and there's different skills from each role that I guess you kind of use for each area that you're kind of in at that point. And it's so important for people to have that moment where they have a bit of a creative outlet, which I'm sure you find in all of those roles, but they're so different. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And at university, I'm teaching directing to the film students, teaching them how to work with actors, which is awesome. I'm loving that. Oh, wow. I love that you just like have a toe every area, which is so fun. Yeah, I love it. I love being so creative and being able to, I guess, explore different creative passions all the time. Every day is so different. I only really DJ Friday, Saturday nights occasionally through the week, but it's only really two nights a week. The admin is picked up though, so that's starting to happen through the week otherwise yeah I'm at uni I'm only teaching at uni one night a week and I normally take that day because I'll have meetings throughout the day then typically I'll be either doing a relief teaching day during the week so yeah, yeah my weeks are so different every week or I'll be on set for some of my students because they're all making their own film so I just worked as production designer I just worked as production designer on a short film recently, which is the first time I've ever done that. A newfound respect for the art department, I'll tell you that. But that's why I was excited to set up this little space. I was like, oh. I love that one, you just turned up with the wig because I was like, yes, that is definitely what we need today. So no, I appreciate the effort that you've gone to today with your creative little set there. I just love it so much. And of course, the wig, I was like wondering if you were going to show up with the wig today. I love it so much. So how did the wig and the name Peer Pressure come about? The wig came about because I actually used to have short pink hair when I first started DJing, like during that time of COVID. And then my acting agent actually contacted me and he was like, I really want to put you forward for some auditions, but I can't with your hair like that because you don't look natural. And I was like, oh, but I'm a DJ now and I need it. And he was like, well, do you want to do any acting or do you want to do DJing? And I don't like making choices like that. Like, why can't I do everything? Yes, I love that you found a way to do both. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I ended up dyeing my hair blonde. He said I needed to be a natural hair colour. So I went blonde and it was about this length and like a white blonde. I did a few gigs with it like that. And I was just thinking like, it's just boring. Like people don't recognize me as much. I feel like the pink hair just was a bit of a wow factor. People were like, oh, it sets her side a little bit. And then someone suggested get a wig. And I always thought wigs would be so uncomfortable. Or... So I spoke to some of my drag queen friends and I was like, tell me about the wig. Is it uncomfortable? I see that you're able to dance in it and it doesn't come off. So how does that work? <laughs> Yeah, how can I be a part of it? <laughs> yeah, how can I be a part of the drag queen community without being a drag queen? Yeah, I tried it and I was like, yeah, done. And as you say, like people just like recognize and resonate with that pink wig and it kind of creates like, as I said, like a bit of a alter ego moment where you're like, I can be anyone right now. Exactly. And it's really cool, actually. Now I'm starting to do bigger gigs, bigger gigs, sorry. And people are coming to 
the next one again and again and they're like oh as soon as they see me on stage they're like oh I know you I've seen you play somewhere else because the pink wig is so recognizable oh my gosh I love that I love the pink wig it is definitely a vibe but I also just think it's like your personality too like it matches each other I think that that's really important as well so tell me how can you describe like what people can experience this peer pressure movement like tell me about it it's fun exciting it's a vibe you know it's just one of the best times of your life that's what I'm hoping to create for you and if I don't then but no I think that's a perfect way to explain it because as I said I got lost on your Instagram stories before we came on to chat you actually called me and I was like who is calling me and then I was like oh my god it's time yeah I was like oh because I know you wanted to um test it like five minutes before and so I was like is she calling it's five minutes before <laughs> Oh my gosh, that is too good. And I also just think by watching the people in the crowd, like at your gigs, it's like they are so passionate. They are like dedicated. It's the best. I feed off their energy and they feed off my energy. It's a give and take all night, you know? So if I'm having a lot of fun, they're going to have a lot of fun. And if they're having a lot of fun, that makes me have a lot of fun. And it's just this constant return of energy you know perfect opportunity for that return of energy that's like what you need and I think that when people are choosing vendors for their wedding I think that that is so important is that people just come they bring the energy to your evening because like it's your most important day which is so beautiful that you can be a part of people's weddings and just like what I would say is enhance their reception because all wedding vendors are so important but I know that there's gonna be some wedding vendors if they're listening to this are probably going to like cry on the inside, but I would have to say that a DJ is one of the most important wedding vendors for your reception because they can like make or break. Yeah, I agree entirely. Like the, the music is one thing you don't want to have to worry about if you've got so much else on your plate. There's already a lot of stress that goes into planning a wedding, but if you can relax with the music side of things and make sure that that's taken care of, and whether that be having a musician or a DJ, or there are some people I know that do both, which is just amazing. If you know your music's taken care of, it's one less thing to worry about and it's entertainment for everybody else there. I completely agree. And I think it's something that you touched on earlier is that the DJ is like not only playing music and like it's a craft within itself, but it's like you're also reading the room to see what people are vibing and how to get them on the dance floor. Like there's so much more that goes into it. I guess that's why I wanted to chat with you today is to kind of share a little bit more about that is because I guess when people are planning their wedding, it's like, oh, let's not get a DJ. Like we'll just play Breaks My Heart, but like a Spotify playlist. And I just sometimes think like, don't do it to yourself. Each to their own. Yeah. But I recommend not doing that because it takes the stress out of it. Yeah. If someone else is in control of it. Yeah. Like I said before, the DJ is reading the crowd and sussing out the vibe. And if your Spotify playlist isn't accommodating to that particular vibe you'll make people move away whereas if you've got someone onto it it's literally their job to be making sure that the music suits the time of the night as well or the time of day that is such a valid point it's like not putting on an absolute banger that's like made for the end of the night at like six o'clock well six o'clock isn't too early to play a banger it depends it just depends on the environment really like if you've got if people have kind of just walked in after the ceremony and there's music playing you don't want to have something really hardcore coming on typically with a spotify playlist you'll pop it on shuffle and then it'll just start mixing through random ones and then you'll have a really fast song and then a really slow pretty song it's like wait 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 that's not right and you don't want people coming onto the dance floor like for a particular song because the Spotify playlist has just so happened to like shuffle that song and then the next song that comes on you're like see ya it's like a slow violin like <laughs> you're like wait what then you've lost the dance floor. Exactly. Particularly in this economy, people are finding any way to be able to save like costs for their weddings. Like I totally understand and resonate with that. But I think that I've spoken about this previously is having a chat with your partner prior to the planning journey and saying at the beginning, like what your non-negotiables are. Like for me, the DJ is definitely a non-negotiable because I think that that is just such a big part of your evening and like what people are going to remember. So I guess it's like, if it does come 
down to like a monetary value. It's like having that discussion prior to your planning journey. A hundred percent. I think that it'll add so much value to your wedding or to any event. And what do you love most about being at a wedding and DJing at a wedding? Like what do you just adore? I love the crowd at a wedding because you've got, well, sometimes children and you've got, you know, people in their nineties. You've just got such a range of people from all different backgrounds and they've all come together to celebrate a beautiful couple and it's fun it's like a game for me like oh what am I going to play to make these people dance to get these people up even to get like their grannies and grandpas up like what what song can I do that's going to bring everyone together it's a lot of fun like an achievement to be like right I reckon this guy's kind of down for like this kind of song yeah exactly and then I'm watching out for a little bit of grooving even if they're still sitting down eating or something and I'm just like see these ones I'm like oh we're on to something now tell the listeners a little bit about like the process that's involved in booking you for their day in booking me for their day I typically direct people to my website and on there there's a booking form like a booking inquiry form so if you fill that out and then comes through to my email and then yeah there's a bit of back and forth I'll meet up with them or I'll give them a call or two or seven (laughs) everybody's really different as well especially for weddings they'll plan my like they'll plan almost every song if I'll do the ceremony they'll send a playlist for before the ceremony they'll send a playlist for what they want as their to play between the ceremony and reception and there's others that I'll just ask for one or two songs or maybe five songs per area I guess of the night it just depends on how long to show you kind of like what kind of music like you're after yeah but then again if the playlist they send has five completely different genres and completely different you know artists and styles but it's just all about communication is key really you know just making sure that we're on the same page and then I guess like on the day or on the evening you're also trying to like as you say read the room like see what it is that the like the guests are also loving too and of course like the bride or the couple are going to be on the you know dance floor as well so seeing kind of like what they're loving as well for weddings in particular it's so important to take requests because I know a lot of DJs don't take requests I think that's what sets me apart a little bit I love requests because that was always me requesting songs before I started DJing I was always requesting songs and, and I love taking requests because it's going to keep you on the dance floor, you know? It just depends on, I guess, who's there and what the expectations are from the bride and groom. Because if they are really strict on their playlist, I'll sometimes, if someone requests a song and it's not on the strict playlist that I've been given, then I'll just say, I'll sometimes bring them around. I'm like... I have to play from this playlist, but come and have a look. Is there anything on here you want me to play next? Because all of these ones I haven't played yet. Yeah. So I guess you kind of get like a vast range of couples who are like, as you say, really particular about what they want played. I mean, I would just be like, you play like whatever you're feeling like on the night. Like that's kind of, and I guess people are booking you for you as well. Like they're not just like, oh yeah, a DJ, whatever, like she's available. I'll take her. Like, I feel like people are booking you for like the whole package. The wig and the fun outfits. (laughs) (laughs) for the wig for the outfit for the vibe for all of it are you asking couples like what they don't want played I know that I've seen that before is like where DJs are like now what is like your worst request that you don't want played on the evening well I do that if if they're giving me a lot more free range but if they've planned everything to the T pretty much I don't need to ask that. I know exactly what I need to play because <laughs> they've already told me. <laughs> but I'll ask, I'll often ask that. Are there any do not play? Like, absolutely not, no matter what. And it's funny, I've had a few recently ask for strictly no nut bush or macarena. And I'm like, but everybody knows those. It's really funny. Maybe that's where I've seen it is like TikTok coming through and saying like, definitely don't play like specifically those songs. I think that that's quite funny. People are just like, why? Why is that, do you think? I don't know. Give me a couple of drinks and I'll be up there doing the nut bush. Yeah, right. I had one bride not long ago say to me, 
definitely don't play Nutbush, but after a few drinks, I'll probably come and request it. And I was like, wait, wait, do you want me to play it then? So like that, I'm getting mixed messages here. Do you want me to strictly not play that at all? Or do you want me to allow drunken you to request it and play it? Like exactly. It's like, I need that in writing. Thank you. And maybe it's like a, on the evening you play it and then you just like hide down underneath your decks being like, I don't know where she's gone. Yeah. Yeah, I take the wig off, just blend in. Now, I recently saw you in action, absolute vibe at the A Darling Affair. And that was just so much fun because I immediately just looked at you and I was like, oh my God, you need to be a part of people's weddings. I have to share the love on you. Now, where else can people find you? As you say, you do like gigs, obviously like at local clubs, I guess, but I'm assuming you also do like other events. So where can people find you? Yeah, so I play a range of events. I play anything from pub or like a restaurant. I played in restaurants a bit too. It's crazy. I do so many different gigs where I'm constantly doing different like vibes. So it's just My music taste has broadened so much since DJing because I'm like, oh, that's a nice song. Yeah, I like that. But yeah, I'm playing on Yacht on Sunday, the Yacht Club. So that's a different vibe again. That is so exciting. It's so exciting. I love playing on the Yacht. But I'm doing lots of themed events. Like I do like Taylor Swift nights and like Harry Styles, One Direction. Like that's a lot of fun. And this is where you get like the passionate ones. Like this is the video that I got like captivated in because I was like, not only are they a movement within themselves, particularly the Swifties, like I'm just like, oh my God, so good. So good. Yeah, I did a Beyonce themed one last weekend and oh my gosh, that was just so fun. Oh my gosh. I need to come to one of these. Like I feel like I would the best night so much life. fun but yeah you can book me through probably the best place is my website and also on my website I put on their upcoming gigs and I update that every week or so or whenever a gig comes through and I put their public gigs that people can come along to and like if there's tickets the ticket link so that's cool so good I still do a lot of private events I do a lot of 50th birthdays <laughs> Which is lots of fun. I love that kind of music though. It's so much fun because I, when I first started out. I think that's hilarious is like, you know, you are literally accommodating to every single person. And I think that, as I said earlier, it's like your vibe. People are like, you know, obviously you can accommodate the music to the 50th or to the wedding or to, you know, some fancy restaurant. But I think that is hilarious. Like people are just like, I want her at my 50th birthday. I know. I'm like, oh do I wear something a little more conservative or are people like no 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 I I want peer pressure I want peer pressure and I'm like okay all right like I don't know here she comes (laughs) coming in red hot it's funny I think as well it's just like it's creating that fun environment yeah no matter what the audience I'll make sure to find that well you can tell that you are yourself even so passionate about it now In regards to the booking process, obviously talking in regards to weddings, like how far out are people booking you in advance? I'm getting some booking inquiries coming through for like over a year in advance. At the moment, I'm not taking bookings more than three months in advance. That's just because I'm releasing some of my own music soon, making the music videos, and I want to start planning out some gigs around that. I just don't really want to lock myself into anything. Obviously, people planning weddings will want to plan them more than three months in advance (laughs) just send an inquiry through anyway because things change all the time if I can't help out I'll point you in the direction of people that do I just think that about three months two two months ish is a good time but for a wedding you probably want to be doing it about six or seven months but I think the perfect thing is as well is like you know particularly for people who maybe once this episode goes live you know still don't have a DJ or they've thought to themselves I'm just going to do the Spotify situation and then they've listened and gone actually you know what I really need her a part of our day if you're listening and you don't have a DJ it's definitely someone that you need so go send her an inquiry because you might be available but that is just so exciting that you're releasing your own music like what's the process in that I am trying to teach myself production obviously with learning anything new it's a process but um, I've been working with some producers who are already experts in that field because I sing I'll come oh my gosh is there anything that you don't do I'll have a go at everything you know I love anything creative and sometimes it's just the attitude that you need right yeah I can't believe how 
quickly DJing has kind of just snowballed and it's just getting bigger and better. So I'm thinking I need to use this platform to get my songs out there because I've been writing songs forever and it's always been my dream to be a performing artist. I think I just never really had that platform, but now DJing is bringing me that, which is really cool. I also think you're different also just, you know, you see a lot of male DJs. So being a female DJ in the industry is just incredible. And I think people are drawn to that and they're like, yeah. Yeah, no, I love it. Uh, When I see a female DJ, if I'm out and about, I get so excited as well. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. I love that. Get more female DJs. Yeah. And if you're going out as like Pia, they're probably like, yeah, like why is this chick so psyched? Yeah, seriously. It's so funny. And then you're like, no, like Pia pressure. <laughs> That's why the wig is actually, it's really cool because it, it does separate me a little bit. So if I do go out, you know, meet all these people, and then I'll come back with my wig on. They're like, oh, nice to meet you. I'm like, oh, I met you the other day. <laughs> wait, what? Yeah. And they're like, wait, she's lost it. I was like, yeah, I wasn't wearing the wig and I had glasses on. Oh my gosh. That is just the best that you can relate to like all these different versions of yourself. But they're all still me. It's just a different exterior, I guess. I'm sure people are giving you feedback after the experience, but you're kind of witnessing it firsthand, like as they're enjoying it. Like, what is that feeling like? It's unreal. Yeah. Like I said before, if I get someone a little bit grooving and a shaking or singing along to something, I'm like, that's feedback in itself. You know, I can see that they're enjoying it, but yeah, I just love it. I love receiving feedback because I'll be exhausted. Like I exert so much energy at a gig because I'm just dancing and singing along the entire time and up with everybody else, especially if if the gig exceeds like three, four hours, which a lot of them do, I can barely walk at the end of the night. And I just like, cause I've just been going at a hundred percent for like six hours straight, you know, which is wild. So when I do receive like a lovely email or even an Instagram message or someone will tag me in something from the night and write best DJ ever, best night ever or something. I'm like, Oh, thank you so much. Like it makes it all worthwhile. Like, I'm so glad you had such a great night. It kind of just like keeps you going, right? It kind of keeps making you like push the boundaries, do things differently. I guess I totally understand like the exerting of the energy, like as a wedding celebrant, I'm giving everyone my all, like it's their day. So I totally understand that I want to make it as like incredible as possible. And, you know, even just chatting to like all the families, like grandma, granddad, like pop, all of them, like I'm always having a good old chat with them. So So I find that I'm driving home. I usually drive there listening to like the most amp up music, like let's go. And then on the way home, I'm just driving in silence. Yes, same. (laughs) I'll do gigs down on the coast all the time. So, and I live in Brisbane. If I'm gigging down on the Gold Coast, yeah, the drive there, it's all hype up. And, or I'll be playing the, like a playlist of songs, like similar to what I'll play there. And I'm like, yes, oh, that'll mix well with that one. Oh yeah, cool. All right. I like this. And then get there, do the gig and just be zonked and I'll just be driving and someone will try calling me and I'm like, I don't even want to talk right now. I just, I've just given my all, you know. Check out from the world. Do you wear your wig on the drive home? It depends. (laughs) That would just be hilarious. Like you're driving along and you're just like. Like if it's in a venue, I'll leave the venue and then rip, rip it off. But because this is a new wig and if I don't have my like wig stand, And if I've got heaps of stuff in the car, I don't know. I'm just like, I don't want to put it down. Especially if I've got like a lot of my DJ equipment. I live in an apartment building, so I have to take it all out of my car. And if I get home at like three o'clock in the morning, I'm like, oh, I'll have to worry about the week. It's like a whole nother trip. So I might as well just keep it on my head. I guess, yeah, it just depends. Depends on the night. Depends how long it's been on for as well. Oh my gosh, I love it. Do you often come to the sunny coast or mainly just the Gold Coast? I do come to the sunny coast sometimes. I've played at Kings Beach Tav a few times. I'm doing a wedding up there actually in a couple of weeks. Oh my God, imagine if I was a celebrant and MC, I would die. Oh my God. Oh my God. We'll chat afterwards about who it is. Yeah. That would be amazing. <laughs> Oh my God. I think I'm just going to try and tee that up anyways. Cause often I'll like MC for people's reception. And obviously I'm like then liaising so closely with the DJ because we're kind of hanging out. So I love that. I'm going to like kind of enforce you on my couples and be like, she's a vibe. I Yay. promise. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was just thinking that because sometimes I even get asked if I know a celebrant. So I'm going to, yeah, let's start a little. Thing. Now, you know, let's just be like a, a package, a duo. We yes. come hand in hand. Love that. <laughs> now, thank you so much 
much for joining me today. I have like just adored chatting with you. Obviously, as we said, a DJ is such an important element of your day and can truly make or break your wedding reception. Thank you. It's been so lovely. Now, lovers, that is all there is time for today. I hope you adored this episode just as much as I did. As you indulge, be sure to share away on your socials, tagging at ohsosmitten underscore so I can feed to you and, of course, do a sneaky follow and stalk on your wedding day. I would be so grateful if you could leave a review wherever you listen to your podcast, five star, of course, and share the love of the podcast to those who are about to walk down the aisle. Be sure to check out and join the official Smitten Love Book over on Facebook. These are our people because remember, no one loves talking about your wedding day more than those about to say I do. I'm here to make your day that little bit more intentional and curated with all the finer details. Within this community, choose kindness. And as always, I acknowledge the land in which I'm recording this podcast. I can't wait to chat next week, lovers. Bye-bye.